I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Hey, he says daily bread. Praise God. That means you need to make that demand on a daily basis with the understanding that he will give it to you. So if you're ready, join me now as we make this declaration. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread it's coming to me now thank you lord for heaven's provision and i receive mine in jesus name amen and father we thank you for today your word will come freely and you will not hold back anything that will be profitable to us we receive your word freely and I declare right now, every body is lifted and yokes destroyed now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now, we were looking at things because I was telling you, the, the business we have with God is the business of receiving eternal life. You want to be sure that you are a candidate of eternal life and how do you get eternal life jesus said this is eternal life that they might know god and jesus christ and i said to you there is no way you're going to know god and jesus christ knowing god as the only true god except he himself reveals himself to you but then the scriptures tells us in second peter where we're reading that there are certain things that you can do that when you do, you will make yourself or these things, when you get them, they will make you to know Jesus. You will not be unfruitful. You will not be barren in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So now we're looking at those things and like, okay, if there is something, for example, I always say this when it comes to giving. Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. But it all starts with one word. And what is that word? Give. So you want it to be given unto you beyond your praying, beyond your trying to labor. He says, give. So you start out the process and say, Lord, you said I should give. So this is what I have to give. So can you guide me on how to give it? And the moment you give it, then you know that it is now open to be given to you. So the same thing here. He says, add, that yesterday we, we dealt with, with virtue. He says, add to your, pay, your faith virtue. We're looking at 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 5. He said, beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Add virtue to your faith. We talked about that yesterday. Now, the next one he says here is knowledge. He said, and to virtue, add to virtue. Now, he just told you, add virtue to your faith. And then now you, you are um, exercising faith and he's telling you, add some class to that faith. Add some excellence to that faith. Whatever you have seen God do in your life, he can do some more. He can, he can make it classy. See? He can. You are believing God for, you know, many years ago, I've said this many times, many, many years ago, and I got to that point where I, I realized it. And I was doing this word without even realizing it then. I realized that if I ever want to travel, if I was traveling, I have to believe God to pay my, then, you know, travel by road then. I have to believe God to give me money for transport, to pay, you know, to, to go for programs, to go for meetings by road. And one day I came to myself, I said, come. Anytime I want to travel, I have to trust God and believe him and he will supply the money for road. So if he can supply the money for road, why don't I fly? Because it's still going to be the same faith I'll put to work. And then 
And I told him, I said, hey, it's true. Yes. Okay, Lord. I want to start flying, Lord. I don't want to continue traveling by road anymore, except there is no airports where I'm going to. If there is an airport there, I want to fly. You can do it, right? <laughs> Praise God. And, and the Lord confirmed his word in my heart. And that was it. That was it. I didn't have to get a new job. I didn't have to go do some business to get more money. The same way he brings the boss money, he began to bring the flight money. What happened? I added virtue to my faith. Now that's how you increase, that's how you better your life. Now he now says, for virtue to work better, you need to add something more. What is it? Knowledge. Knowledge. Find out what's going on in that area of your concern. Get every knowledge that you need to get. Now, this is not just about praying knowledge or uh, revelation knowledge. He is talking about every knowledge you can get concerning that matter. Why? Why is knowledge important to virtue? Because knowledge will give you better choices. Knowledge will give you better choices. Yeah, that's how it works. So he says, add knowledge to your virtue. Add it. So you're already expecting things to be better. But then he says, add knowledge to it. So now I want to know, okay, things will get better. Yes, but how should they get better? Which direction are they supposed to go? Which is better? I should have choices to compare. What will give you the ability to have choices? Knowledge. So you begin to, okay, fine. I can go by this or I can go by this or I can go by that. All that is knowledge. So it says add knowledge. This knowledge is about learning. Do some learning. Praise God. And then watch this now. He now says... Verse 6, and to knowledge, temperance. What is temperance? Self-control. Why is he saying add self-control to knowledge? I'll tell you why. Because knowledge has the ability to bring pride. When you know too much, there's a tendency you become proud. So he says, self-control must come in, must come in to your knowledge. So you know when to use what knowledge and you know when to not apply certain knowledge. It's called self-control. So you now have a wise application of what you know. It's called self-control. For you to be an inventor, you need a lot of self-control. Because sometimes your mind will just go crazy. So you need to control that mind and every knowledge in you and bring it to a point where it can produce something meaningful. So it says, add self-control to your knowledge. Now, you, you are believing God that your life should be better. Now, now why, is the, why are these things very important? All these things you are doing, you are doing it in faith. Because that's the first thing, say, add to faith. So he's not talking about someone who's laboring out there trying. He's talking about the man who's walking by faith. So he says, that's your faith that you're walking by. Add virtue to it. Okay, yeah. So, so I'll add virtue to it. Okay, so my faith is going to start walking. Like I told you, I was traveling by road. Now I need to start flying. Okay, okay. add some knowledge to that. Okay, so there are different airlines times of their flight so you don't just go to the airport where you want and say i want to fly and then they say sorry there's no air, there's no flight going where you're going to have knowledge know about it that thing you're going for know about get some knowledge about it and then to that this add self-control and to self-control he says that's to, to, to temperance we are we now in verse six and to temperance he says add patience Patience is what controls self-control. Now, do you understand that? If you lack patience, you will not be able to effectively work with self-control. Because patience is what gives you the ability to be calm in the presence of things not even working. You want to shout. 
You want to scream. You want to discipline somebody. Self-control comes in. But how you're going to enjoy that self-control is when patience is at work. So patience is what makes you enjoy not doing things the way you would have loved to do it. That's patience. You want to beat this person up right now for misbehaving. But you exercise self-concern. No, I'm not supposed to beat this person. If I, if I beat this person now, ah, what will people say? Now what that? Self-control. But what's patience? Where, where does patience come in? Now, you have exercised self-control by not going on to beat the person. That's self-control. You held yourself. But then you need to introduce patience. Patience is what's going to tell you, instead of beating this person, why don't you go about it this way and, 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 and talk to the person and, and, you know, and like, oh, it's true. It's true. So you see, you exercise self-control by not going violent. But you can actually be there and gnashing your teeth for why you had to let this person go. But patience now comes in and begins to tell you, instead of fighting physically, you can do a mental battle. You can tell the person this and tell the person how to go about this, teach the person this and teach the person that. You will win that person over at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. What's that? Patience is at work in you. So it says, add it. So having self-control is not enough. Add patience to your self-control. Now, when you add patience to your self-control, thank you, Lord Jesus. Watch this now. And it says, and to patience, godliness. Godliness. Now, you are patient and you are realizing, okay, there's another way to go about this. He said, while at that, don't let your mind become corrupt. Add godliness to your patience. Patience is what makes you enjoy that waiting period. You are waiting for a situation to change. It is patience that makes you enjoy that waiting period. You, you, you are able to find out, okay, while I'm waiting, I can actually be doing this stuff and doing this stuff. He said, when you are doing all those stuff, make sure it is done in godliness. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. So he said, add godliness to it. All right, so while I'm enjoying what I'm doing, it must be godly. And look at what he says next. And to godliness, he says, add brotherly kindness. Now, what is brotherly kindness? Brotherly kindness is the love that looks out for one another. It's not just love. It's the kind of love that looks out for another person. So now I'm concerned. I can do anything I want to do. But I'm concerned that if I do this thing the way I want to do it, this my brother may, mis or may misinterpret my actions and he will get it all wrong. So because of what he would think or not understand and I don't have the time to explain to him, I choose not to do what I want to do the way I wanted to do. What's that brotherly kindness? Looking out for someone and say, oh, um, this guy he doesn't have a shirt to wear. Why, why not put it on the shirt? Okay. Oh, okay, I have two pairs. Okay, I'll give you one. What's that? Brotherly kindness. It's a propelling force that makes you do things for another person to be happy. Now, he's not talking about being a man pleaser. You know, you, you displease yourself to please others. No, this brotherly kindness is, is love actually, but then it's the one that looks out. So you have a reason. You are not just this person that um, you don't take care of yourself. You just because you want people to be happy with you. That's not what he's talking about. Already self-control is working, you remember. So he says, add patience, and then add godliness. And in that godliness, add brotherly kindness. So now you're showing love to everybody that is around you, that needs that love. Praise God. And he says, and to brotherly kindness, add charity. Now, this is actually the giving part of love. So you really become a giver. 
you are outgoing. You, 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 you are actually releasing some stuff. Now, he says, add all these things. And I've just shown you that they are all related. So just say, pick things at random. No, when you are walking your faith, it says, add excellence. Put some class to your faith. So as you put some class to your faith, it will bring you to walk in a higher dimension now. And then he now says, when you put some class to your faith, you must do it with knowledge. So add knowledge, praise God. And you keep adding and adding and adding. And, and guess what? I'm going to show you tomorrow how these things bring about the eternal life that we're talking about, praise God. Because my time is up today, praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Listen, be about these things, meditate on them. And, and the Spirit of God will cause them to be found in you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.